Okay, the time being 631, we will call to order the Tilton Planning Board meeting for Tuesday, May 9th. Uh, first thing we need to do is review the minutes of the May 2nd meeting. You should have those in front of you. It is two-sided. Make a motion to approve the minutes of May 2nd. Second. Second. Okay. Good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So be it. All right, next is Planning Board Case 17-04, Continuation of Site Plan Review, Proposal to Operate an Adult Care Facility at 100 Autumn Drive in the Rural Agricultural District, R6102. Madam Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself. So noted. Do you have that diary? Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the first thing is, has everyone had an opportunity to fully review the application? And do we find it substantially complete? Case 17 04 is substantially complete. Do we have a second? I second it. Thank you, Jane. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So noted. All right, first case of business with it is we need to discuss and vote whether the proposal shall have a regional impact. Everyone was given some handouts for assistance with that. Um, I think being so close to Sandminton, it would be reasonable to notice Sandminton as to what's going on. Do you want to kind of explain a little bit what that means? Regional impact as far as this case and Mr. Fall, why we're voting it? on it? Not really. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah, so state statute establishes um, that after a, an application is accepted, which just happened, um, the planning board uh, should consider whether it has a regional impact, whether it has an impact that it goes beyond the, the community itself. Um, and within state statute, there are some sort of, uh, you know, if this happens and that happens, and this is sort of a list of, of factors that would trigger trigger um, a planning board to deem something a development of regional impact. But it says that that's, you know, including these things, but not limited to. Um, and so in this case where, um, you know, the, the, uh, the development is so close to San Martin, as, as Chairman Tilton said, um, that's why it's uh, sort of a possibility this time. Is there anything else I can add? The, the statute is our, you're looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. Chairman Tilton? Yes. I'd just like to, an explanation for the other factors that you think make it a regional impact. Because those listed, I believe, I don't see it having an impact on any of those. Or does that proximity to bordering neighbor communities? But it's not, it's it's really only, there are not that many residents in that area. That's, that's the only reason I have a question. <laughs> but they would have, no, I'm not talking about the town of Sandwich, and I'm talking about the residents located right next to the sports center. Uh, they are. But the regional impact discusses all of those residents, and also um, Sandwich being so close, we may have use of their emergency services. <clears throat> so according to RSA 36 colon 55 and we're looking at 36 colon 54 through 
36 colon 57. Yeah. Um, in case anybody wants to look it up. But, um, there is a 55 proximity to the borders of a neighboring community. So <clears throat> oh, that's why we're concerned. Colon 3656. It says, doubt concerning regional impact shall be resolved in a determination the development has a potential regional impact. So if we're in doubt, right. then we Better. should go forth on so, the side of caution. We could make a motion to vote. I'm going to vote in favor of the fact that it should have a regional impact. Or I'd make a motion to that effect. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so you'll go So, forth yeah, that. just, you know, I'll just <coughs> mention that this basically expands the, the number of parties that, that are notified to include the uh, Lakes Region Planning Commission and the Town of San Martin. Um, so, within five days, both those entities will be notified and they'll receive notice of the next hearing uh, involving this case. Okay. Okay. Next is to vote on whether the proposed use shall be considered an adult care facility. So does it meet our charter permit permitted uses for an adult care facility? Doing some research, I I think it's fair to say that this is going to have to be classified as an adult care facility, um, according to where it's um, zoning. So um, I make a motion to propose that we shall consider it an adult care facility, the property in K17-04. Any discussion on that? I've done research on it and read everything else, and I can't see that it falls under the category or anything else. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstaining. And the last item is we have had a request by the Applicant to continue to June 13th. <coughs> Anyone have any reason? I make a motion to continue to June 13th. Second. No. Those in favor? Aye. 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 It would have been continued anyway with the original impact. Right. So this will be continued to June 13th, same time. Yes, ma'am. Possible to ask the question? Yes, ma'am. I want to know what just happened. You all agreed that it is an adult, an adult care facility, yeah. or it's not? It is. Yes. But how could you come to that conclusion after reading the zoning when this is an overnight care facility, and the zoning in that zone never allows for any overnight care facility? 
It doesn't allow for rooming houses. It doesn't allow for daycares who spend have overnight. I mean, they've got a variance okay. for medical facilities, but it's outpatient. Inpatient is absolutely not allowed in that right. zone. So I'm just questioning how you came up with that being the correct definition for this. We will not be discussing that this evening. Oh, you have to do it. Do you All right, next on our agenda is working our workshop on, oops, I'm sorry, we want to. Mark Layton from Sanderton, with what you saw for in the, the definition of adult day, adult care facility, does it speak to it being medical or non-medical? We're not going to be discussing it tonight, Mark, I'm sorry. See you in June? See you in June. Right. I'm sorry. May I yes. So, as much as the, the, the people for the place has, have asked for a continuance, are these not just general questions that don't necessarily pertain to the person that is trying to get the facility so you could answer some of the questions? It, it directly pertains to the facility and we will not be answering okay, questions right. this evening. <laughs> sorry. I know that's not what everyone wants to hear, but that's <laughs> what's got to happen. <coughs> So will there be a vote on the 13th? And what happens, if, what happens after that? We can't guarantee there'll be a vote the 13th. We don't know what they're going to bring forth with their site plan, whether we need information, what. So, so what's the steps? They see you, if you prove it or deny it, what happens in both scenarios? Proving it would go to the zoning board then? And then denying not it? Not necessarily. Would... Depends, said it, it's got too much information we still need from them before we can make a decision. All right, so the question also is if you denied it for some reason, just saying, I just want to know how the protocol goes, um, could he over, over, could they go somewhere else to get There are appeal you? processes. There are, and then it would be up to who after that? Um, then it would go to zoning it, next. Yeah, it depends on the nature of the appeal. It's either going to go to the zoning board if it's uh, deemed to be like a planning board making an administrative decision relating to the zoning ordinance, or it would go to superior court. When does the, like, the, if we, if lawyers involved, when would that happen? Well, there already are uh, lawyers Yeah, on their involved. side, but not on ours, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, if you'll permit me, Chairman, okay. till night. So, on, on June 13th, um, the, uh, you know, assuming there are no more requests for, for continuations, that the, the application has now been accepted, the 65-day clock is ticking. So most likely on June 13th, there'll be a more substantive deliberation. And, um, you know, that might be a, a good time to bring uh, an attorney counsel. Yeah. Um, most likely folks who have probably been anxious to have a chance to speak will, will likely get their opportunity at, at that meeting. If not, they can be clearly uh, informed of, uh, of uh, you know, when the next meeting will be and, and folks will be able to continue along, follow along. Really, I, I'll add that, as, uh, as Ms. Shepard mentioned, mentioned by one of the planning board members, that you know, the, the decision to make, uh, the, the planning board's decision to deem this a development of regional impact really kind of necessitated that this hearing not go any further tonight anyway. So I think, you know, hopefully folks understand that, you know, in order to include Sanderton and, and Lakes Region Planning Commission, it needed to be continued one more time anyway. And if it is approved on the 13th, is there a channel for appealing that approval? It, similarly, there'd be, yes, there would be opportunity to, to uh, appeal to either Superior Court or to the Zoning Board, depending on the nature of, of the appeal. 30 days is usually, you know, a Kind of a, this, usually things have to be done within 30 days. You mentioned 65 days starting today? Uh, yes. So it has to be approved or not approved in 65 days? Unless the applicant waives the 65 day requirement, which is common. Like if a planning board is, is say, we need more time to hear this and they're at 60 <coughs> days, say, then the applicant really kind of needs to allow for that continuation because otherwise the planning board can simply say, we don't have enough information to make a safe decision, we have to deny. So the 65, you, we're, there's no, you know, 
absolute that this that the decision will be rendered within that time frame, but that, that's do we have rights in any of that time frame to ask for any kind of a continuance or unless we have or with legal counsel if if there were points of order that we brought up that needed more um, research so and a butter requesting a continuance. Um, I don't, I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Uh, if it did happen, um, hmm. I'll, I guess what I'll do is I'll, I'll seek the answer to that between now and, and June 13th. So if it happens on June 13th, we'll be ready for it. Uh, Chairman, I'm just going to continue to answer questions if that's all right. Uh, if the applicant wishes to have another continuance on the uh, June 13th meeting, do they have to file the continuance a certain number of days before June 13th, or can they do it at the meeting on June 13th? I think they. You, I, I don't know of any uh, requirement that it be submitted so so you know so so far in advance of the meeting. It could happen at the meeting. I mean, it probably does happen. It has happened in meetings where people come in and say. See everybody on the 13th. Thank you. Just bought 600 West Main, which is the old Porter Pavement over by Dairy Queen. Um, he wants to put a landscape business in it. So he's just curious. Can you hear me? He's curious whether he needs to uh, go through site plan or not. Could you bring the conversations downstairs so we can continue? Thank you. Yeah, big one. On the same side as mine. Not where the mother lives. Oh, she lives on the trailer. Which one? They want to put a landscape. It's the big house they just sold. Yeah. You know what you're going to do? Yeah. The dead people to the right of the dead people, it sits with them. 
you can't see it. Look at it. You can walk in front of it. It's back ahead of the I guess I need to sit and just push. You wouldn't see it unless you look down the floor next to the dead on the other side. And then they and I abut on the back side. So, so does anyone feel they need to go? Well, is it a landscape business where people are going to go in and get stuff, or is it just... Well, yes, yeah. it's just seven. Uh, no, it's just going to be basically, we're not going to have customers from in and out of there. We're just going to be, it's going to be our operations. So you're just going to store stores? Our equipment's going to be there. Our guy's going to be there in the morning, go up to the job sites every day. Are you going to be living in the house? Yes. After major renovations? Mm -hmm. I, uh, we're in the middle of remodeling it right now. Yes. Yeah, I did, uh, we put a roof on, we just the vinyl side in it right now, and we're doing the interior as well. What is everyone's opinion? But we didn't make we didn't make the the landscaping company that went in where that old hot dog stand and the used car lot and everything used to be, did we? We didn't make them do a site plan. We did in that there was various businesses on that same yeah, property. But they never. It, we didn't do it for that business. She just came in and did it so she could add those. and and the used car. But we didn't do it for the landscaping business. Didn't yeah. so. No, we didn't. Yeah. But I, I think it's a pretty similar to what was already there. there. I'm fine. Yeah, that's, I, what I, I don't that's what I was thinking. That's why I yeah. want to talk to I don't think there's any reason to. Yeah. There you go. Should we make a motion? Yes. Just, I'll make yeah, a motion so we that we... Minutes. Sure. Yeah, I'll make a motion that um, the landscaping business going into... What's the address? 600 West Main. 600 West Main, not... Yeah, my neighbor. ...find it necessary to do a site plan review. Second. In all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Well, there you go. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. See you in the, yeah. see you in the leaf pile. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you. Great. All right, we've got the... It's, yeah, it'd be nice to have somebody there. All right, cluster developments. Yeah, go ahead. I hope you feel better. Yeah, I hope you feel better. Thank, Thank you. Look at this. What kind? Oh, that's what I was going to do. Yes. Well, that goes your plan for the night. <laughs> okay, first off, in the cluster residential development, do we have that definition yet? Do we have to work on the definition first? Uh, oh, um, <laughs> oh. And where is. is it in our Charter of Permitted Uses? So, uh, yes, it's in our Charter of Permitted Uses, and it is defined in zoning. Okay. Um, so we, that's, that's taken care of. So we're um, get, <laughs> get in a problem with them. <laughs> and, 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 and. <laughs> Name it off the oh. chart. Cluster development. Okay. So we do have it defined and we do have it in our chart of permitted uses. So now um could I just babble for a moment? I I, you um, want to come join us? <laughs> you don't have to sit over there. It might be best with all my papers here for now. Maybe I'll move over in a second. Um, I, what I did, I put um, a copy of Bedford's uh, regulation with my hand notes on it because I marked areas that I thought were things that we should bring into our ordinance. Um, so that's why I put that in there. Then after that, there's a color or color annotated. That I took what's in our subdivision re regulations right now for cluster residential development. 
and anything you see in orange or yellow is, is, a, is an edit from what we have. So I didn't want to go very far, but I did at least want to get started with some things that I knew we had talked about. Yeah. Um, I mean, in my mind, if, if you guys were just going to say, Dari, just go and, and, and keep working on this, what I would want to do, and, and I guess I'm kind of seeking your approval, would bring, to be to bring in these things that I've marked on Bedford's ordinance. So I'll, I'll be quiet now and we can proceed however you wish. I have a question on Bedford's. Mm. Uh, single attached dwelling used exclusively as elderly housing. We're not talking cluster development necessarily being elderly housing, are we? Um, I think not. No, I'm not really familiar with that portion. The, I, I intended to highlight just the, the minimum tract area to bring up for discussion whether we wanted to have a minimum lot size. Um, so I, I didn't mean to mark, but anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, permitted use cluster development shall be restricted. So I guess. The way they're saying it in Bedford is that it could be for elderly housing. And I I would think that in Tilton that wouldn't be a bad, you know, if someone wanted to do a cluster development and make it exclusively for the elderly, I don't, know, I don't see a problem with it myself. Well, I think that what this is saying, though, is cluster is exclusively elderly housing. Right. Yeah, is that it's how we're using it? It's a, I, I don't like the word. No. It's just an option. No, I think it's one of. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the, okay, so it's it, it has to be. Shall yeah, if it does, I don't think we should do that. Okay. <laughs> if that is what they're saying. Shall be restricted to the following uses. One, two. So single detached dwelling would be a single family home. Oh, okay, I see. So these are options for cluster. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It really should be or, not and, I guess. But yeah. Do we know if this is this ordinance has been challenged in the court? Um, no, I don't know. I can find out, or I can try and find out. My next question would be: How did it stand up? Here. How did it stand up in a legal challenge? Yeah. Okay. Try Googling it. No. Selectman Fogg, do you have any comments or input on the sewerage part? There is a. Currently, I think uh, our regulations are 150 feet. Uh, we're sort of in the process of revising them. That might increase, but it wouldn't be a thousand. And yeah, because what, you, what you're saying is if you're within a thousand feet, you pay to tie in on your dime. Right. I don't extend to you. Um, and I don't know what the water district does. Where do you see that? Second page. Number uh, three. Three E. Oh, sorry. That was a little further. So you were saying it's 150 what, now? 150, 150 is a starting. Until you hear it differently from either Catherine or I. So, yes. I mean, I wonder if um, Peter, would, would, what do you think? Like, if if the planning board wanted to say, if you guys wanted to say, all right, well, um, we want to incentivize. We're offering cluster development as a, as sort of an environmentally friendly way of developing. And so we want to require a little bit more, and more than 150 feet. You think, okay. is there some, okay. Yeah. But a thousand is a little much, or a lot much. <laughs> well, when you look at the cost per foot now, I think it starts to okay. become prohibitive for the right. applicant. Yeah, but I mean, if, I guess my question would be, where are lots available in Tilton that we could potentially have cluster development? I would want to be protecting, say, the lake, mm -hmm. you know, and if you're within a thousand feet, I'd rather have you 
on, on a sewer versus having mm -hmm. something on um, Lakeside. And I, I just, I can't. Yeah. You know, well, like I'm thinking of, there's one parcel I'm thinking of on Route 3, and that's, you know, they got, what, a mile of Lakeshore, and I don't know if the sewer, does the sewer run through there? Where I was, the, uh, yeah, uh, the Anchorage area. Anchorage, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I mean, I would want, and if they're within a thousand feet, I'd want them to be tied into sewer versus having all sorts of, you know, something that could potentially leach into the lake. Yeah. Get out to any of your farmland on Winter St uh, School Street. Yeah. That could become very cost prohibitive because uh, heading up the street, I think we may find legend spots. Yeah. Um, Probably a lot of legend there. And then if we tried to tie over to Sherwood Drive, there may be wetlands issues accessing Sherwood. So. Is it unheard of to put, instead of definitive, that it has to go in front of the sewer commission for individual approval, or does that just get too messy? Well, I think as if, if you are trying to sort of potentially woo, for lack of a better word, developer, you know, you're, you're looking for you're trying to attract environmentally friendly development to Tilton, um, and you're probably better having a clear set of regulations that a potential developer can look at and know what, what he or she is getting into. So I think that would be the negative of that. I think the positive, obviously, is that it allows for the sewer commission to treat each case yeah, one by cool. one, but <laughs> I, that's my thought on it. Yeah. I, can you do a different amount of feet depending on if it's lakefront, if it's near near wetlands? I mean, can you put conditions? I, yeah, I think that's you know what I mean? probably like a really good so idea. Feet it's, of it wouldn't be considered front. discriminatory in the courts. I, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. I, I, but uh, that's a good question. I mean, I know you know uh, where, where the town I live in is is you know. The, it really does kind of, maybe not on sewerage, but on certain factors. It calls if you're on the lake, you know, if you're shorefront, you're being discriminated. You know, you're you're, you're being more conscious. It, yeah. Well, I mean, you, yeah. The the requirements are are heavier in some instances. I I like that idea. It it makes me wonder, you know, <laughs> where else we could take that kind of thinking. Um, yeah, that's not a bad idea. I'm just curious because yeah, I mean. Well, on that yeah, parcel of land you're that looking way. at, if well, no, any that's big development, in they'd go sewer lake, anyways. Lake Town, that's a problem. The sewerage leaking into the lakes, yeah. it's, oh, it happens like all the time. It used to happen right here in Tilton, right on this river, <laughs> years ago. Yeah. Many, many years Phyllis ago. Brown Trout. Uh, <laughs> solution to pollution is dilution. <laughs> it was the mindset back in the day. It was. My dad still, 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 still. <laughs> Yeah, still the mines there. Right? <laughs> well, I, I just would, no, I would be more concerned about lakefront or riverside or, or anything that you know versus something that would be up on School Street. Right. But then again, you don't know what you're going to get well, into. If, in if we took a walk downstairs, I could show you a map of the groundwater protection district in Tilton, and you might be shocked at how big an area. Oh, it, it is, is huge. Yes. Huge. Meanwhile. The no salt areas are very minimal in comparison, which I find interesting. So would would the whole ninety three quarter, the whole route three quarters, all in it? Would would um, would something systems be allowed in the water groundwater protection areas or no? Well, yeah. There are some already. Yeah. And you know I yeah. Might be a little going a little far to not allow septic and that. Like, no, no, I just, so I'm just huge more of a section of town. I, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, come on. <coughs> I mean, what I could do is, is work on, you know, possibly some, some language for, um, I mean, 
shorefront lots. Again, I, I, it's a kind of an exciting idea because I really think we could take it pretty far and start protecting the shorefront in other ways. Um, so I, I don't know, if you guys want, I'll, I'll look into that, kind of um, adding some different numbers for environmentally sensitive areas. All right, all right. Oh. You know, you think a lot of the regional commercial districts would qualify to have something a little tighter. Mm -hmm. guy a couple years ago that wanted to put something up behind Lowe's. But that would be that would be within a thousand feet, so he would have to tie in. Because doesn't he front on the three? But that was a ways down from where he wanted to put it. Yeah, but he would still be tied into the he would be within a thousand feet of the subject system, so I mean of the sewer line. So the structure or the property? Because it's based on structure. Is it structure or property? Wouldn't it be the property? Yeah, the, way the, way the way sewer interprets it is the structure. 150 foot rule, which is, uh, I believe, in the 149 RSAs, is. So this says of the tract. Yeah, this is above the property, not the building. Yeah, this is. It might be something else we have to look at. Yeah, thousand feet of the tract, not the. Mm -hmm. not so you the take that, that far northwestern corner of that lot, and it's within a thousand feet. Well, too bad you hit so a tie. So that's in. a question. Right. Right. One of, yeah, because that property he was looking at, he was that's looking at like. But I think. Um, way up above, that would be. It, if you're looking at a cluster development, you know, it, it, it might be appropriate to say of the, of the tract because it's, you know, it's multiple units and it's kind of a new development in theory. You're saying, sorry, you know, even if it's just a corner, or maybe if it's just a corner, they could seek a waiver or something. But, or we could say, I felt like I read somewhere where it talked about the closest building or the furthest building or something like that. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for where I saw something like that. That's a good point. Peter, what's the, what's it cost a foot to put in sewer line? 100 bucks a foot? That's probably in paved areas. It'd be a little bit cheaper if you're gravel or long sea. Where's I'd have to check. The closest cluster about that? That asphalt's running like you know, any seven, three bucks a ton. I guess it's just putting it how you define them. That's what we're working on. I mean, I'm just yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> picture. I'm, I'm just trying to picture it. Um, they, I've been to the closest that I can think of at the moment is uh, in New London. I've been to one in New London, I think. In fact, I don't know. I'm sure they're closer. I mean, they're they're probably living, you know, condo communities that fall would fall under. I'm this. just trying to picture what a realistic cluster development is going to look like here in Tilton. I mean, I've seen them in in my hometown, but that, oh, I don't, I don't even know like what the building where, where trends. Are are, are, Westford, yeah, Mass. Okay. Uh, that's right. Yeah. I mean, ideally, it's a lot more green and a lot less pavement. Well, it's actually, you don't really notice any difference. Um, it's the same amount of pavement. It's just, there's more like green area surrounding it, but you don't really, I don't know. Yeah. So we have more stringent setbacks I mean, for? Are they even building? For sure. around here. Sure, if whatever you put for water, they'll be happy. Mm. If they put another zero on it. Well, what would it matter which district they were looking up to? No, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't think it should. I guess. Um, you know, we're not in the business of coming up with exact dollar amounts. No, no, but I'm just saying would. Yeah, I'm sure it would affect the Lockmere district versus the Tilt North. Right, Lock. but I'm, I'm saying where, you know, where it's, Versus Penichuk. Yeah, but I, unless it happens that by doing this sort of uh, looking at different uh, setbacks or 
for different areas if it just so happens that all of the Lockmere falls in a more environmentally sensitive area than all of the Tilt North field. Than it. But I don't think we should sort of say, oh, if you're in the Lockmere district, it's this many feet, because you're in the Tilt North field district, it's this many feet. It's, it's, it's an environmentally based consideration, not a logistically based consideration. And you forgot the Penichak system. Oh, sorry. We got a third one. <laughs> right. What does that serve? That serves, serves like the yeah. Ashlot. Ashlot area, yeah. Now the um, densities. Oh, mm. Yeah. This is a little, or sorry. No, go. Oh, yeah, this is a little, I'm kind of wrestling with this because. I think we're looking at two sort of densities, two lot size considerations. There's what we dealt with with our zoning amendment that basically says, you know, if you're in a, let's say you're in the RA district, minimum lot size is three acres. So we're going to use that number. If you have 21 acres, you divide by the three acres, we're going to let you have seven units in your cluster development. So that's one kind of density. The other density is, how large the, if we want to set an individual lot size like we have done in our manufactured housing regulations where it has, the individual lot has to be 10,000 feet for each manufactured home. We could set a similar sort of density type consideration that there has to be a 10,000 square foot area associated with um, each individual cluster development lot. That's already in our, our regulation. It's the, the sort of the first major paragraph in there. Minimum lot size, blah, blah, blah. So it'll be 15,000 square feet unless they can do it in such a way that it minimizes environmental impacts and for, you know, aesthetic purposes, then the planning board can allow it to go down to 10,000 square feet. That's where there's where there's off-site sewer and water. Where there's not, then it talks about you know the water supply and pollution control commission, uh, the chart that 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 they provide. Um, so I I I guess I I feel like um, you you probably could say there is no minimum lot size and. You know, if you want to try and market a cluster development where everyone's stacked on top of each other, go for it. Good luck. Um, and we'll allow it if you want because it, the benefits that it provides the community are even tighter development with even more green space. I don't know if that's the best idea. Maybe we should set some kind of... Take a look at Lakewood. <laughs> house fire. Right. Yeah, good point. Good point. The neighbor's um, house is melting because it's mm. that close. You know that, yeah. Well, so still, yeah, minimum lot size. We can almost touch your neighbor's house when you reach out to some of the windows there. Yeah, that's very densely packed. Well, and then I, I guess another way, and I, I can work on this. You know, some of them are still season, some are here. Outside of the meeting, um, another way to look at it would be to say, okay, we're not so focused on the actual there being a ten thousand square foot you know, shape that, that surrounds each unit. What we care more about is, is kind of what Peter was getting at. Prop safety, light, you know, s s just proper aesthetic and, and safety and, and, and considerations. And maybe just establish some, I think one of the ordinances I've looked at, they're all kind of jumbling in my mind, but I can sort this out later. I actually did it that way, kind of set um, some spacing requirements. So, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about those different options, but um, I can work more on along those lines and present more. Have any fire departments in the cluster developments you read even suggestions on what they feel would be appropriate? Uh, I don't recall. That's a good. Um, Maybe I will talk. Mr. Jubert has some. Yes, yes, I will do that. Actually, Tim would be a great person to talk with. Oh, I definitely would like their input since they're the ones that have to deal with things we decide and yes, make sure yes. that they're Thank you. It's sensible. Good idea. I 
anything else anybody can think of that we should just be looking at researching on this? Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to, to visit one and talk. I'd like to, I mean, since we don't know of any around here, I think Bedford does have one. Um, just like, what is, what is the trend now for building? I mean, we don't really need to preserve open space so much. I mean, we already have this densely packed area. It's not I don't, I don't know. I don't see a cluster development going downtown, so. Right. I mean, we don't really have a lot of buildable space either, so I'm not really. Well, when you say we right. don't have cluster development, wouldn't <clears throat> down by the roadway in the RJ Moreau condos, isn't that a cluster? The three or four buildings that have six units each? Yeah, that was supposed to be a big development. Well, and they, because the cost for going up the hill, I think, got so prohibitive. They, oh, the housing market crash. It was back in Yeah, no, what I mean is more for the future. This is going to affect things in the future. If I may, I think that, you know, not just Tilton, but much of New Hampshire, a lot of the uh, tracts of land that are ideal, ideal for conventional subdivision are eaten up, and we're left now with tracts that have... Um, natural features that make it difficult to subdivide traditionally um, and also those same natural features uh, lend to it being a good good thing to do cluster bring the lots up to the to maybe the front of the bring the uh, ha the development up to the front of the the parcel uh, where it's easy to provide uh, infrastructure and utilities and maintain the back as open space Rather than requiring, if you if you want to put you know ten houses in there, if you want to put ten units in there, you're going to have to space them out evenly, you know, three acres each, and go all the way back into that tract, and you know, get wetlands approvals and, and wetlands crossings and whatnot. We're saying no, we want to keep those. We we care about those natural features. We don't want to force you into those. We'd rather have you up at the road where development is uh, already taking. Be my yeah, I just I'm I'm just wanting to look at some. It's just for my own. I'm not, we're not, I'm not arguing about it, but we're not okay. going to define everything tonight anyway. We're right? Yeah, I'm just research, I'm so. just curious about what the modern cluster development. Can we ask you to look up a couple of cluster developments that you may find, and just sure. so we could possibly drive by for going that way? Sure. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, I can't think see? of any off the top of my head, but Island the Blue Crown Vic and go on a road trip. Yeah, I'm sure there are some planners who will be very forthcoming with options and ideas. So, if you guys want, we could do a trip to one. Yeah, but I just look at the, the zoning map. I mean, there's a lot of larger parcels of land out here, until, mm -hmm. especially when you get into rural agriculture. And, you know, and do you want, would you rather have? Uh, a hundred houses put in, or would you rather have a hundred, you know, or maybe fifty, just closely together and, and keep some of that open area? Maybe create a trail system or something. Or but it's not really totally up to us because they're going to build what sells, right. what they think is going to sell. It's not like we're going to be like you have to have a cluster. No, but it gives an option. Yeah, Definitely. it gives them an option to develop a piece of land that maybe wasn't developed. Would be too expensive and too hard to develop otherwise. Perhaps. The economy will come back one day, and uh, this would be good to have in place when it does. Yeah. Be ready. <laughs> now, so anybody else have any other input? In the interim, Daddy will put some things together, get us some addresses. Slowly, way at this. Thank you guys, that's good. Uh, that'll give me a lot to work on. So you guys don't want to discuss the helipad option? Uh, I was bummed that uh, we yeah. were going to ban helipads. Yeah, I, I mean, that. we need to put that in that we want to. We haven't decided. That's just what they did in Bedford. And Bedford is pretty uh, 
pretty detailed and they list out every type of yeah. animal that they don't yeah, want. Really, right down yeah. to the well, actual you're stuff. almost into Manchester and you're also into some know, of the rural really, they parts even covered nearby. So buffalo, you can... bison, llamas, alpacas, <laughs> ostriches. <laughs> well, you can't have what? They get pretty limited. They get pretty involved. No, it's not a, indeed. Yeah, it's it's in the subdivision. Well, you can't have because it's not on the or something. Livestock. Livestock. Yeah. She'll include but not be limited to. It's quite a yeah. Quite a selection. Are we going to ban buffalo from Tilton? I wouldn't even have thought of that. Oh, they have the buffalo park. Except for the Lila Buffalo Park, and we named it after them. Bob Hardy found what he thinks was a buffalo horn when he was walking one of the trails recently. Are you looking at this Jaguar thing here? Does it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I was trying to. Yeah. Oh, if I may, I, th yes, I, there, I think there's one last page in your packets. It's a an email from Bob Ward, the planner in San Martin. Um, we could take this up at the next meeting. I did want to just get it into everyone's hands. Basically, uh, Jaguar Auto uh, is mostly in San Martin. There's a sliver in Tilton. I was not here when that was site planned, but. This uh, email explains uh, Mr. Ward's recollection of how that was handled. I think really Tilton kind of said, go ahead, San Martin, we're, you know, uh, let's see, the review process was primarily conducted by the San Martin Planning Board, but final approval was by each individual planning board after a joint public hearing in Tilton, with each board having its own signature block for signing by the restrictor board chairman upon approval by the planning board. So uh, basically he's just trying to give a heads up and, and trying to coordinate um, processes on this. It looks like they're going to be coming back. Um, the only part of that site that's in Tilton is with a little... It's a little sliver of... Where the sign is, right? Right. The sign going yeah. in front The of buildings the house. and everything are in Sambington. That's right. Yeah. In front of the house, though, where the cars are displayed is in Tilton. We already gave them a new sign last time they were in. Yeah, if you want, I could call them and say, hey, I got the, got the email into the hands of the planning board, um, and uh, we're going to, you know, I'll have this, or I could just, con we, could, we could finalize this on our meeting on the 23rd if you guys want. Um, I just wanted to make sure there were no, like, uh, Dramatic reactions from you guys on seeing upon seeing this. Like, no, last time it went horribly wrong, and we can't possibly do it that same way. No, it's pretty much in their town. Yeah. I don't want to dictate to Sandington what they okay. need to do. <laughs> Good. That's the only plot of commercial land they got to do something with it for you. Just the most important piece to Jaguar is until it's the where, sign. where the where they display the cars in front of the house. That's all until. <laughs> Sir. The house is in Samberton, but it's like a piece of pie. Yeah. Yeah, follow up with Sam and Den and see. Okay. See what they feel. All right. Is there any other business that we have not attended to? Else you I can think of, we need to. I got drafted late in the game. That's okay. <laughs> I got a text from Catherine. I don't know, 5 5 30. Well, sure. you made it. I don't know. She just asked if I could be here in her place, so I said, sure. Wait, you got a text from Catherine? Write, yeah. that, write that down. Oh, no, you get them. It's just not always timely because the phone's usually in the pig pen or the uh, Tahoe. <laughs> One of the two places. Two story. <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Well, you can may continue your conversation. Sorry. She's uh, <laughs> we're trying, we're trying to find a way to the front. We've got to go the wrong way. Just go that way. We could teach the pigs how to tap them. We all sat. We could fill two birds. Yeah, I like being told about a pig coming on the side.